if there isn't a husband, then there's, I think there's, there's, there are these assumptions as to you could be, I don't know, some sort of promiscuous, loose woman, some other thing is wrong with you. Uh, I've had assertions that I could be gay, I could be, you know, a lesbian. A lesbian. That, uh, because that's, heterosexual yeah, women it's, must it's, be married. Uh, must be married. There's something, and this this explains everything. You know, why this girl is not, <laughs> and she's so outspoken. She must be a lesbian. Hi, and welcome to an episode of Stigma, the show where we talk about things that no one really wants to talk about. The show where we share stories that no one wants to hear. But more importantly, the show that empowers the voices that need to be heard. This is Stigma. And on this episode of Stigma, I'm really excited to welcome the wonderful and amazing Shanuki Diavis. Hi, Shanuki. Hi. And the ethos of this show, Shanuki, is really for us to share our personal stories, yeah. uh, to keep it open for everyone, to really remove shame and stigma over some of these issues, which many people don't really want to talk about or share. Um, and today, especially, I want to speak to you about an issue which affects a lot of women and a lot of women which are silenced or made invisible because of it. But before I go into that, I want to ask you, how old are you? I'm 44. You're 44? I will be 44 this year. Okay. Yeah. And then I want to ask you a question which many people in society probably ask you when they find out that you're 44. Are you married? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not married. I don't have any uh, uh, children out of marriage. I'm not divorced because that's the kind of the tick box that people go through before discovering, oh, she was never married. <laughs> Is it out of choice? Primarily, yes. I've never had the biological clock ticking. Mm -hmm. uh, and even from a small age, you know, how all the aunties and all that bully you, uh, you find a boyfriend, uh, you get married one day. And I, I firmly maintain that I would not. Nobody believed me <laughs> and I'm still not. And that's still confusing a lot of people. Uh, yeah, it, I don't think it's like where it's a hard and fast no. It's just that I've never come to the point in my life where I've needed to or wanted to. Or thought I could live. You like, never thought that it. you needed a man to validate your existence. I don't. There was a time I would have uh, thought otherwise when I was younger. But I think by the time you hit forty, you know yourself a lot more. I've managed to uh, gain a fair amount of independence, self-sufficiency for myself, and um, yeah, now it's like I don't know. So. If it happens, it'll happen. If it doesn't happen, I'm not going to die over it. You said that from a very small age, people kept on suggesting that you're going to get married and that you should. When you say small age, what age? But that's the thing, right? From the time you're a child, little girls, they grow up dreaming of the bridal and the wedding day. And I was one of those little girls. I mean, I used to play dress up like the bride and all that with my cousins and you know and everybody talks about it you know uh, someday you're going to be a mother and you're going to be a wife and that's kind of set out for us you know these expectations of what are the stages in life you have to go through to be accepted as you know socially normal and respectable uh, so I don't know, I can't tell you what age specifically, I just know that from the time I remember, you're always associated as a girl child, you're always associated about this phase of your life that you will aspire to. You're given the dolls to be a mother to, right? Um, and you know, you're dressed prettily and you're taught to behave in a way that you will be found attractive and marriageable when you come of age. No, I mean, right? it's, it's it, what you're saying is so true, is something which I have seen as a man happen to young girls and my friends when they were young children, is that from the time you're a child, you're constantly told that your validation of life, of what you've achieved, yeah. will be defined on actually your marital status. Yeah, 
and this role of wife and mother is so romanticized and glamorized that girls themselves that that is kind of what they aspire to and i know a lot of my peers my my friends members of my family it's it's almost like that pressure you put on yourself that if by a certain stage of your life you haven't achieved this or you haven't gotten married or you haven't had your first child or whatever you feel like a failure because society has created that environment did you ever want to have children no never no why not again not something that really appealed to me um I used to be a teacher also uh I don't think so you I love children. children I don't I don't know if you can put it as I love children I can tolerate children okay. I'm quite impatient I think and other people's children are fine they're fun right and I can obviously teach them all the bad things so yeah it's I just never wanted children as as a 44 year old woman who's unmarried and does not have children and as you said you didn't want children how do people in society see you as or treat you as they okay i grew up in a very privileged segment of society where i was allowed to be independent with my choices didn't mean it didn't raise eyebrows didn't mean there weren't questions and there weren't like uh, i i know for instance there there have been lots of like pictures fielded at my parents about finding someone for me getting me married off you know there's something wrong if i'm not kind of thing i'm sure they've dealt with a lot more than they have openly told me about also doesn't mean i don't get the questions but at the same time i've also been brought up in a way where i have the liberty to speak my mind and say i'm not interested that said um yeah after a certain age after you've left school like the first thing kind of people just look at you is do you have a boyfriend are you married do you have uh, babies if you go anywhere it's like people just assume either they write mrs the minute they know it's sort of how old you are or they look at you and okay this is middle age therefore immediately you're a mrs and then you have to correct people and say no i'm miss and then you get like So questioning yeah people make assumptions and of course people blatantly come up to you and say are you married do you have kids and you say no even the random people at the supermarket that you meet like after years and years the first question they'll ask is are you married i've had doctors asking me like as if it's any of their business you know they'll ask you so the way the doctors work in sri lanka is a lot of them they don't want to ask if you're sexually active uh, if you if you go to a doctor they say are you married and then when you say no i have had doctors who have straight out just looked at me and said why why aren't you married there's nothing wrong with you know so, so they assuming that if you're not married something, something is wrong is with wrong. you something is wrong and those questions have been there and that's a very interesting thing you brought about actually access to medical services yeah. because um you know women are at risk of cervical cancer yeah. and if the hpv vaccine is something which is given to women who are sexually active uh, but there have been many cases here in sri lanka where a doctor would ask a question like are you married and if you say no you are automatically denied the hpv vaccine it's it's not only that it goes into much younger where young women even things like advocating for the use of a menstrual cup is like gasped at like because you don't want to break her hymen you know she'll lose her virginity if you use a menstrual cup you know and that reduces her value as yeah. a bride so her sexual and reproductive health is always compromised in order to keep her but choose impact i mean that happens yeah we spoke about you know access to medical services and what doctors have asked yeah. you how does it impact you being a single woman of 44 when you access public services other government services um so yeah there there's okay i will say that it has impacted me terribly in uh, for instance i love to travel and now i'm in an age and uh, i would say a financial status where i can afford my own travel and for some reason that's such a question mark if i apply for a visa to go somewhere the fact that i'm a single unmarried woman without dependents makes that intrusive kind of investigation into my character i have felt it being a lot more 
lot more questions come up like why and how come you're able to you know do so why are you interested in solo female travel like gasp unheard of uh, so I think similarly even with government sort of departments or state institutions I've had this sort of experiences where you know the, if you go to a police station for instance uh, which I have for other personal reasons and if you go to the Grama Sevaka and you go to access these services the, one of the questions is Ko Mahatya you know? and you're like now at that point you also have to be careful of there, there's a, like a personal safety issue right do you want to disclose to these people that you are single and you live alone uh, and you know what would that be for my personal safety I have had like policemen asking me straight out afterwards and there was one policeman I went there to get my ID card I lost my ID card and I needed to get a new one so I had to go and put a police report and all that there also they said me and I'm like and it's like no at that time it was hotris they cause up and then he said <laughs> so if you're not married, yeah. then you must be divorced. Yeah, it's like, hey, that your marital status obviously was completely irrelevant, irrelevant to why you went to file a police complaint. I mean, that has happened a couple of times. Whenever I've gone to the police station for anything, uh, it's always been this, why isn't there a husband bringing you? Why do you think we as a society are so obsessed about your marital status? and your childbearing abilities, whether it's you or women in general, uh, why do you think there is that obsession? I think it's the patriarchy, you know, those patriarchal norms that we have, this, the fabric of our society, especially in the global south, it's this thing of women are supposed to play this almost subservient or secondary role. Uh, and you need a man to protect you, you need the man to provide for you. Th those sort of roles, those binary roles are demarcated in society. So when you don't adhere to that norm, it just goes against the grain of what everybody is comfortable with. So it's, it, to this day, I mean, with all the love your parents and your grandparents and your family will want you still, even though you're 44, self-sufficient, financially independent, will want there to be a man in your life because they just don't feel that you will be protected enough or taken care of enough if there isn't. They feel that a woman is unable to take care yeah. of herself. And I mean, what kind of interventions have there been in your life mm -hmm. so that you could get married and have children? Okay, so uh, interventions in the sense, no, I, I have had people who have been like uh, pitting other people's sons and all that to me like marriage proposals and all which I have just ignored or not ignored very vocally <laughs> and so, but um, then there, had, there was this one time when I was going on a trip to Singharaja and I stopped at a tekade to have a tea and there was this amme this sweet little archi who was at the tekade and you know I asked her a tea and seated down and having this sipping this tea and then immediately the first question is do a powder ko, mahatya ko, bawala And you know, very curious. So I said, Nema, avihaka, I'm not married, no children. And it was like this, ane. And immediately she scuttled off. And then she brought me this butterfly pea tea. And she said, drink this. It's very good for my fertility. <laughs> and she will pray that I will find a husband soon. And you know, she actually like patted my head like poor thing, like don't be discouraged. And she prayed that I will have five babies. <laughs> and then she proceeded to count off how many children and grandchildren she had, because you know, you have to compare. And uh, she sent me on my way and you know, she actually... So what did you tell her? <laughs> easier for me to remove myself from the situation than getting to a discussion there about my rights. From what I've seen in my work and interactions is that girls are just not brought up to voice out that they might not want to be married or that they might not want the partner that has been chosen for them or even maybe they have gotten engaged or you know, they have uh, gotten into a marriage and they become unhappy because it's not for them and then it's just unheard of for a girl to have the choice to say no you know because i mean there are women in 
really unhealthy toxic marriages who don't leave because they're more worried about what society and their families would think of them and do to them uh, than about their own personal happiness you know because personal happiness is always attributed to this role of mother and wife in a woman's life and uh, I, I do think that pressure is there I'm very content I'm very happy it took me a long time to find my own sense of self-worth uh, and self-validation but just because I'm happy doesn't mean everybody else accepts that. Either they think I'm too intimidating for a marriage, I don't know, maybe I am. Or just the, the, nobody can fathom that there is a genuine disinterest in ticking that box unless I really want to. I don't know, I might change my mind. You start questioning yourself, you start sort of wanting relationships for the wrong reasons to be able to tick those boxes to be able to be socially acceptable. Um, you, you want a man in your life to stop being preyed on, because that's something that I have experienced. When you were younger, you had boyfriends or you dated people just so that you won't be sexually no. harassed by someone? Uh, no, no. I've been lucky where the relationships I have been in, I got into it by choice. Uh, Did you remain in relationships because you thought you won't find anyone better, but this relationship yes. is toxic? Yes. There have been times, and then there have been times where I have been very content and extremely happy in relationships where the rest of my ecosystem did not approve, and I had to leave those relationships as a result because of those pressures. Um, so again, it's that thing of what are you worth? Your happiness is not worth. It's our happiness that you have to, you know, try and achieve. Especially when you're a girl. We raise people pleasers as women. Um, and I just stopped people pleasing after a while. And my final question to you, Shanuki, is what would you tell your younger self, the younger Shanuki, a teenager or in your early 20s, if you could look back at her now, and if you could reach out to her, what would you tell her? I'd say speak out more. Now I'm talkative now. I'm opinionated now because I learned my rights the hard way. I learned my self-worth the hard way. And I had to go through quite a bit of personal struggle to get there. I wish 20-year-old Shanuki had me or someone like me on her side when she was making certain choices, when she was too busy worried about the opinions and the approvals of her world. I wish I had that sort of um, mentor to remind me that it was my mistakes to make or my decisions to make uh, and it was my happiness that should be prioritized and to do what was right for me and not what I thought everybody else thought was right. Uh, yeah, so unfortunately I didn't have that. Thank you so much for being part of this Thank talk you for show. Me. Um, I know it's not easy sometimes to share about, you know, our histories, our past, anyone our present, uh, but I really appreciate you talking about this. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.